Hi everyone, it's Let's Get Your Fashion Drawing Tutorials. In this lesson, we're going to render this look from Alchemist uh, Korean fashion brand. And here we have a flannel shirt and a denim trousers. So, and some sports shoes. Here are the tools that you'll need. You can match colors if you use some different brand of markers. I start drawing head with a circle. And actually, you can check the video where I explain how to draw face at different angles, including front view as well, um, using a circle. Why I moved to a circle? Because circle is one side of a sphere and it's easier to talk about turning head when you use a sphere rather than a flat rectangle. So now I'm drawing face. I located eyes a bit further from each other just to stylize it a little bit. a bit longer head because uh, otherwise it's going to be too flat. Next she's walking on a catwalk and this is a standard pose. So I'm drawing her shoulders and her hip line at the angle. And again there is a separate video for the body drawing on the FSketcher channel on YouTube with all the measurements. Right now I'm doing everything you know just uh, approximately. So I just picked the lens of the body that I really want to have. I think I drew a hip line a bit higher, so my hips are going to be a bit lower than that line. So then here's a crotch, breasts under the armpits, and armpits around a centimeter from her shoulders. Since she's walking in a standard pose on the like catwalk where they try to step on the central line, I draw her ankle just under her chin. So let me move the camera. So basically her foot, her front foot is just under her um, chin. So here I, I need to move it a, a little bit so it's really true. And then I just draw a straight line from her right side and next to it I'm drawing another leg. The knee is close to the front knee bit lower and the uh, other leg is a bit shorter and curved. So now I'm drawing her shirt and as you can see there is a two lines for the collar. So the one that's surrounding her neck and one is coming from the back and uh, laying on her shoulder. finishing the front of her shirt, making it a bit wider than her body, a little bit like trapezium shape. Here we have a zipper and then she has some uh, top underneath. And then uh, let's add some wrinkles. And then she has this like brushes. And uh, I usually draw navel under the waistline. And for the trousers, we need to show that they are, you know, a bit wide and laying on the body. So I'm drawing it a bit apart from the body outline. Drawing the details of your trousers. Here we have um, fastening and all those um, stripes. And your um, bottom of your trousers are much lower than crunch point. So uh, you can see I drew it like uh, almost two centimeters down. That uh, dark fold is following her body shape, approaching her knee. And we have that hole on her trouser just around her knee, maybe a bit higher. This is how the bottom looks because in the video I just located camera so you can't see the bottom but that's how I drew it. And then I'm adding your pockets 
So this is uh, that fold that I was talking about. And then you can add extra fabric on the side. And uh, then you can see this triangular um, fold because of the movement just below the other knee. And on the side I'm also adding extra fabric because these trousers are really, really wide. And uh, again, pockets. So here we have this belt. And um, so next, let's draw her sleeves. I usually always draw front part of the clothing and after that I'm adding sleeves. They are very often behind the front part. Mm. So here, uh, just, you know, at least schematically draw the arms with the sticks so you see the direction. And now I'm just adding um, fabric around that sticks. Uh, her baseball cap. I am uh, made one arc from one corner of the eye till the next one and a flat line above it. So on the top I don't draw it much higher than the outline of the head, just a bit. And make it wider, closer to the ear so you can add hair coming uh, from below it. Next, I'm using a fine line pen. I use Pigma Micron, produced by Sakura, 01. There's a sort of pen that I usually use for the outlines. And I outline all the details and try to move the entire arm when you're outlining, not just your wrist. So if you need, you can turn paper to draw longer, maybe horizontal lines. And then, after you finish, uh, erase all the pencil. I'm using tan color for the primer shadows. Here I'll show how I use several colors to render skin, because usually I use just one marker, but here I want to show a different method. So I show all the darker shadows, I don't draw them too wide. showing some apps. Next, uh, take satin and draw on the top of those shadows and beyond. So I'm widening a bit those uh, area with shadows. So you can show like, for example, um, eyelids, like lower eyelids with a lighter marker. I really don't like drawing two perfect faces, so I try to add some uh, eye bags or just, you know, normal things. Next, just cover everything, including shadows, with the same setting, lighter color. So, uh, just covering everything. Don't miss the shadows, otherwise you'll get some uh, not really beautiful effect on the borders. So, I'm coloring all the skin. So now while it's drying, you can add a little bit more of a lighter shadows. It will blend well because marker haven't dried yet. Next, on any plastic or solid surface, um, spread some coral marker. And using the same setting we used before, I'm mixing it with coral that I just spread and adding everywhere that I have shadows. Why I'm using coral? Because it's a bit reddish in comparison with tan and it gives this, you know, fresh tan skin effect. So I really love it. Next I'm using purple pencil. I use purple pencil to uh, make those shadows darker. I also use it to show some details that markers cannot show because markers are very blurred. They can show some shadows, but for example, tip of the nose or anything like that, it's better to use pencil. Next, with white ink gel pen, I'm showing highlights on the face, nose, chin. 
Next with warm gray 3 I'm showing uh, shadows on the her baseball cap. For her shirt I'm using poppy and I'm going just to cover everything. Next I'm taking carmine marker and coloring that area where she has a zipper and the brushes. It's a bit lighter, more desaturated red. So next I need to draw those, you know, typical stripes of a flannel shirt. And with warm gray 4 I'm coloring those stripes. You can use warm gray 3 if you want to have them lighter. I'm drawing horizontal stripes now of the same width on the same distance. Try to make them wavy so you imply some you know, wrinkles. Next, at the intersection, we have some squares. So everywhere those vertical and horizontal stripes intersect, I draw black squares and color them. I color those smaller squares between black ones a little bit with pencil, but you know, uh, not darkening too much, but adding some of this noise of a pencil. So I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of her shirt. So that's how it looks now. So next I'm using white charcoal pencil and for now I'm going to show the highlights on the shirt everywhere where I think there are some uh, folds should be I showed the top of that fold that is a bit lit so next I'm coloring with diagonal lines insides of that light red squares and uh, just smudging a little bit that pencil. With warm gray three, just next to the light lines that I drew, I'm showing shadows that's supposed to be on the sides of the folds. And with warm gray four, I'm showing like some uh, like really dark shadows between the sleeve and the bodies. With warm gray 4 or warm gray 5, color the top, adding some poppy to the brushes. And with just dashes, I'm showing the, the zipper and then just adding highlights to the brushes. little bit more of white on those red squares to give it this woolen softness. Next with a black marker I'm adding shadows on her top and showing some shadows inside the folds. A little bit of a warm gray four to show uh, shadows on her body coming from those brushes. 
with the same marker I'm coloring her baseball cap Next, I'm using Ice Gray uh, 3 and just coloring the rest because her cap has some highlights. Next, I'm adding Warm Gray 5 and just showing the darkest parts. And I want to add more of the shadows under her cap. And some highlights on her nose. For her jeans, I'm using Indigo color of marker. And for now, coloring everything except for that um, folded lower part, which looks more like gray rather than uh, blue. I'm coloring everything, leaving that metal details. make sure that the color is solid so you don't see that much of white of the paper and now I'm drawing those characters on her cap not in those details because uh, from afar you can't really see all those characters but something similar so um, Adding some ice gray 3 on the metal, partially, leaving some white highlights. And, and then I'm showing all those double uh, seams that are very common in uh, denim trousers. And I'm showing that torn part. So we have two uh, rows with the blue uh, threads and uh, inside we have also some white threads coming out. Next, I'm spreading black marker on a plastic surface. And I'm using Indigo that I just used previously as a blue for her trousers, mixing it with black and showing all the dark shadows. When you, use, when you mix markers together, um, once you just start coloring, it starts losing that pigment that you used it, um, that you mixed it with. So now my marker is more like blue and blue, so I can show all these a bit lighter shadows. Okay, so on the sides, even though you don't see that on the pictures, it's, um, I'm showing the shadows. And they look like this range of mountains, just uh, vertically. And in between them, you can add uh, some, some folds like that in the center as well. So I'm just, I want to show this dark, dark fold that is following her hip uh, line. And on the sides, I'm going to add these uh, shadows as well. First, let me show the ones that I really am seeing and uh, this side shadows. So next let's work with the other side. You remember that triangular fold that we drew in the beginning? So I'm making the, usually when um, back leg is bent, the lower part is a bit darker because it's not getting the upper lighting. Next, I'm using white charcoal pencil. And everywhere where I didn't add any shadows, so I'm avoiding any 
fold shadows and adding these diagonal lines and then I just smudge uh, them and we get this beautiful effect. I really love this type of pencil. And uh, adding some textures on her belt. So that's how it looks now. And I'm using Eyes Gray 3. For the beginning, I just color everything with it, uh, the lower part of your trousers. I'm mixing Eyes Gray 3 a bit with Indigo, the main blue color, just to add a little bit of blue to that gray because it's the backside of, uh, of a blue part right showing with extra layer of gray showing all those you know all the texture all very light shadows and adding a bit of blue to that uh, threads where the denim is torn next with ice gray swipe i'm showing really really dark shadows You can use any light blue. I'm using a cornflower just to cover those threads because they don't really look like white. They'd be darker. So next, I want just add some more of the shadows on her belt. And inside of your pockets. With black pencil, I'm adding the shadows. And again, with the pencil, we show something that um, like smaller details, thinner um, shadows in the folds, things like that. And in the same way as I worked with blue part, I'm adding some highlights with a white charcoal pencil. And as with white ink gel pen, I'm adding those uh, threads on the edge. All right, so with Ice Gray 5, I'm covering all her shoes. And while uh, it's still wet, I'm adding a bit of black everywhere where I see it on the sides, the sole of her shoes. And with um, Ice Gray 5, I'm showing the shadows under her trousers, adding some details with a white ink gel pen and with white pencil showing the highlights on the tip of your shoes and can add some strong highlights with white ink gel pen just right in the center so that's it so next uh, i'm using ivory as a base color for your hair Actually, you can use primrose, but I put my primrose somewhere so I cannot find it. So next I'm using sandstone, which is like a really, really light brown. And I'm coloring behind her, uh, starting from darker parts and behind her ears, just uh, area that is still dark because of her cap. Then trying to make these lines meet each other and usually behind her neck it's a bit darker than on the sides showing some smaller the edges of your hair
with warm gray 5 I'm adding some very very dark shadows behind her neck and under her ears just a little bit and then using warm gray 3 strokes to show the texture of the head don't push too much and as you can see at the bottom when I added the curl uh, you can see those curls when you use pencil or something thin you can actually show that add some fluffiness Alright, so we're done with this sketch. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. Please share your questions and suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe to Sketch your channel and follow it on Instagram and see you in the next tutorial.